In this video, we're gonna go through step-by-step step how to create a responsive table in Figma. And stick around at the end for a tip that will help supercharge your tables and give you the ability to add avatars into them. So if we strip it back down a little bit, this is what our table is gonna look like. And this is what we're working towards. So I like to build my tables out and I find this is the best way to build them out so that they scale easily if you wanna make updates and they're the most easy way to maintain it. So as you see, if you drag it from the side, it's responsive and it scales accordingly. So the two ways that I normally do these tables is either you build them within the auto layout frame as columns or you build them as rows stacked next to each other. I've done rows as I found that easier to use at the moment, but it's really a personal preference. So if you look on the side, you can see all the rows. So a heading row and then these are all body rows here and these are all components. So there's kind of two parts to go deeper. So we have the table and then one part deeper, we have the body rows and the heading rows component. And then within each of these rows, these are all built with individual cell components. And that's the smallest component that I use in this stack. And the reason that I do that is that this is the best way to update things on scale easily. So a lot of the projects that I work on are quite large. So we're not just changing one table. If we wanna make an update, we might be changing hundreds of tables. And if someone decides that we're changing something or it's gone through a review and we need to update the color or the font or something, if I have to go through hundreds of tables and select them all individually like this to change the color or the font, that's gonna take way too long. So the reason that I build them out with this base component is that you can just make all the updates at this base level and that pushes out accordingly. So for example, if we wanted to update the font and change it to bold, we can change it here. And then we could change the background to a gray, for example. And we're just updating that one base component. And that's pushing out all those changes to every single instance of that component, which saves heaps of time on a big level. So now let's undo that terrible design. And let's go through practically how this actually is built. So you wanna start with the basic cell. So T to type out, body here. Let's change our font. Shift A to apply auto layout. Let's fix up the padding and the spacing. We're fixing up the spacing even though we're not using it right now, but we'll use it later. And let's apply a white fill. And now we have our body cell here. We can name it body cell. We'll click create component. And that's the first part of your table build. Now let's build out the second bit, which is gonna be our heading cell, which is the same formula again. Write out your word, shift A to apply auto layout. And we'll name this one heading cell. And now we have the two most important base bits of our responsive tables. So you can combine these together if you want as a variant, or you can leave them separate. It doesn't really matter. It's just important that you have these two base items. Now let's build out the second part, drag a copy of your body cell, and now put two next to each other, select these two, click Shift A to apply auto layout, remove all the padding, and now let's put 10 in here in total. And now we're gonna name this body row. Now a few things that you need to do, select all the body cells within it, and make sure that the width is set to fill, and the height is set to fill as well. That way we're building out the start of the responsiveness. Now click Create Component, so you have your body row now, and now we're gonna do the same thing with our heading cell, 10 in total. Select all the heading cells, change the width to fill container, change the height to fill container. And now let's make them both the same width for the time being. So 540, let's make this on 540 as well. And now that we have both of these set up, select your heading and click create component. So now rename this one, heading row, so now we have our two layers. We have our, our base component cells and then our rows as well. So now I'll drag an instance of both of these. And now select both of these and click Shift A. And we're gonna remove all the gap here so they're next to each other. And now let's add a couple more to make the table. And this is the basis of our table set up. As you can see, as you drag it here, it resizes, but there's a couple more things we need to do to finalize it here. So let's rename it table. And to get the customization that I had before, 
you gotta round the corners at this level. So let's round the corners here and then select clip content. Let's add a little bit of a stroke so it's easier to see the outside. And now let's make some updates and see how easy it is. So actually I'm feeling like I can't really see the difference between the heading and the body cells. So let's add a bottom stroke to the heading cells. So now it's easier to see. And also I don't want them center aligned. I actually want them all left aligned. So it's like my body and change it to align left, take my heading and align that left as well. And that's updated all the table already as well. So one other thing you need to do in here is that when we drag it downwards right now, it's actually not gonna be responsive. So you need to select all of your rows in here and you need to set this to fill container. So now that when we go horizontal, it'll expand and be responsive. And when we go vertical, that's gonna expand and be responsive as well. So one thing you wanna do as well is that if you wanna build out in the component methodology, it's like your table here and make this a component as well. So now we have a bit of a stack of components as you kind of see, but this just gives you a great level of customization. And now for that bonus tip as well of how to kind of supercharge your tables, but also give you the ability to add avatars into them. So the way that I do that, and this is something that I do a lot in design systems within Figma, is using a thing that called a slot component. Sometimes it's called a swapper or a switcher, but all it is, is that it's a component hidden within the component. You have to follow me here for a second. This is gonna sound crazy, but when I show you, it all makes sense. It's a component hidden within the component that you can switch the slot component out for a different component. So you put a slot component within your body one, and then say that you need to change one of these in here to a field or an avatar as an example with the image or a checkbox or something like that. You can turn the slot component on and then switch that to another component, whichever one in the design system to follow the rules. So let me show you how easy this is, but it's actually such a powerful trick that I use all the time. So create a component. It can look like anything. There's no magic with the way it looks. And now click create component and you have your slot component. Normally within a big design system, I'd add some sort of wording so it makes sense. Something like switch this component to a different component. As with a large design system, sometimes it won't make sense if you come in here and then you're trying to figure out what the slot component is, but we really don't need that for this example. So now we have this slot component that we've made it a component drag a copy of it and now command C and you want to actually place it within your base body cell component here, wherever you want to use it. So we're going to paste it in here and it's going to look crazy for a second, but then we'll fix it up. So paste it in here and now you're seeing it everywhere and thinking, whoa, that's not really what I want. And that's what I was saying before that we kept the gap between objects because I knew that we would be looking at this later. And now that our slot components in there and it looks a bit crazy, we want to actually select it, click this little icon here to hide it. And then we want to click this icon next to it. Click the plus icon here, new variable or property. And we're just going to make a simple Boolean. So we want to make this a property and we want to select it as show slot. And currently the show slot is false. So now within your component, you can turn the show slot on. And the reason that's so powerful is let me just show you. So say that we want to add an avatar to the first row of all the items within here. It's really tricky to do when it's all in this component way, because if it's not a component, you can just drag things in. But this presents a bit of an option when you do the component way, is that if you go to drag it in, it's actually not going to let you drag it inside it because you can't edit the component that way. And then you could if you want, we make a property within here that's show avatar. But if you're not sure at the start of a design system of how you're actually gonna build it, and you need that little bit of flexibility as you start refining it, the slot component is really powerful with this. So instead, if you have a slot component in here, you can turn all these on, turn all the slots on for these first items, and then you can switch it with any other component that you have within this design system. And now with all the slots selected, 
I want to switch it to this avatar component. So I can just come up here to the drop down and select slot and then search for avatar within my components list and swap the instance to an avatar instead. And straight away, that opens such a bigger level of customization. If you need to put a drop down in one of these, for example, or a checks box or something, you just turn the slot on and then you can switch it with any item within your design system that you need. And that's how you can go through and create a really simple but super powerful table component within Figma. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a comment on what you want me to make a tutorial on next. And while you're here, check out another video.